Welcome back, everybody, to RimWorld. We started the mana storage research at the very end of yesterday's episode because it's going to open so many different doors for us, and it's just finished, which was kind of what I was waiting for before I started today. So I've got, I just want to remind everyone that the goal of this campaign has always been to test out the Misk uh, establish a town by uh, town charter. What this is essentially, it turns RimWorld into... Tower defense might be the best way to describe it. Wave-based survival. So we are going to hit by raid after raid after raid for a total of about four days. And that way, after we finish that, it's, it's essentially an alternate win condition. It's like basically, okay, you gain control of the planet because everyone else cannot beat you. That's still the goal of things. Now this, judging by the difficulty of the raids we've had so far, and judging by how successful some of those have been. <clears throat> just don't watch the last two episodes. This is going to be very, very difficult. I think this is going to be insanely difficult. Now the mana storage ties into what I'm about to say, but... The whole reason we're getting all these cybernetics, the whole reason we've got this whole breeding program, we want the whole backup and, and everything, you know, the reason we're building these, these death weapons is to be able to combat that and is to be able to win the game, essentially. So, don't worry, I haven't lost sight of what we're doing here. The, the arcane capacitors actually do tie into this. So, there's two different types of arcane capacitor. You've got the arcane capacitor, and then you've got the dimensional mana pocket. Now, the arcane capacitor, lower storage, think of it more like your battery, right? Lower storage, but has a much faster... A much faster redistribution of mana. So the whole point of these is, if you've got loads of people with excess mana, say someone like Krupp, right? Krupp's ability, uh, no, not Krupp, sorry, say, say, take Bonnet. Bonnet's abilities are not draining his mana. You know, he's only sustaining Eagle right now. And he's not going to be frequently using Death Bolt or Corpse Explosion or anything like that. So he's just got a load of mana left behind that he's really not doing anything with. So the whole point of these things is we can bank it for when it might be more appropriate. So the... Arcane Capacitor would be really, really useful, say, building some of these in the kill box. That way, as we use our Arcane Abilities during combat, these Capacitors will automatically target someone with low mana and blast them and rebuild their mana stock. So, say, for example, our Blood Mage has run low on mana, this thing can top them back up and can rebuild their, their mana so they're capable of going back into combat. How many times have we had it in this campaign where people have just not been able to shoot off magic because they haven't had enough mana available? So that's what that one is useful for anyway, and, and getting a couple of these in the kill box would definitely help out a lot. Other thing as well is the Granite Dimensional Mana Pocket. This thing has a huge mana capacity, but is a lot, lot slower when it comes to redistributing the mana. So this would be good having, say, in the middle of our base, and if we need to resurrect a whole bunch of people doing that, or if we have some more utility-based mages like enchanters who don't have enough mana to be able to use their enchantment magic, that's when that's going to come in handy. So I think what we'll try and do is we'll build uh, one of these one of these massive arcane, uh, what is that, dimensional mana pocket, sorry. We'll build one of those in the middle of the storage room because it is just a storage for mana, and then we'll stick down a couple of these arcane capacitors. Now, during the middle of combat, one is not going to be enough to refill everyone because obviously they can only target one person at a time, and generally they'll target the closest person and refill their mana. So I'm thinking we put down like three or four of these things to create a a decent flow of mana to all of our people who are, who are going to be in the middle of combat here. So, how much do they cost? We need... Oh, we actually need granite bricks for them. Shit, can we build them out of... Oh, you can build them out of anything. We build them out of, the bo out of bone. Oh, that's big. Does it affect, like, their storage space or anything like that? Um, I think they've all got the same thing, to be honest. The arcane capacitor will discharge mana to any undrafted pawn in range if the mana ratio of the capacitor is greater than 250% of the mage. Right, okay, so when it hits a certain thing, it will, it will, it will discharge all of it. Drafted mages forcibly draw mana from the capacitor until the capacitor is empty. So there you go. So if, if somebody walks past who uh, who doesn't have enough mana and the arcane capacitor has a, a lot of mana in it, it will top them up just passively. But in the middle of combat, you can drain it right down to zero. And the, these things are basically built for combat, right? That's the whole point of them. So we definitely want to put a couple of these down in the kill box. Uh, I'm going to put one right at the top here. We'll put one right at the bottom because obviously th this one right here, if you look, doesn't quite cover the entire kill box. So similarly, we'll put one down here, and we'll put one in the middle as well. Um, sort of right there covers the whole kill box as well, so that might as well essentially be the middle. Then we've got Meditation Pad for Krupp. And the idea is, we're going to have to build ourselves up, and that's the whole reason why I built this triage as well. I never actually talked about it at the time. We've got to build an area where we're capable of holding out for basically three days. So we've also got to think of stuff like food. We've also got to think of stuff like recreation. Because it is just going to be a constant barrage. I don't know how much time it gives us between raids either. You know, I don't know if we're going to have enough time for everyone to go home and get a couple of hours of sleep. Whether we're going to have to have, like, rotating setup. If anyone has an experience with this mod, please let me know. That being said, let's actually blitz on with things then. So, we need more cloth, which we haven't really been growing now for quite some time. Have we got enough Devil's Strand where I could... 
Uh, we've got 531. you got to remember, we've got all these devil sheep, which all give devil strand. And actually, I've set someone up to train and handle as well, which is something we didn't have last episode. Um, so we've got people now training and handling the animals just to ensure they don't go feral. I think we did lose one because it went feral. I tried to retain it. And apparently, these things have like a 20% chance to attack on failure. It's quite high. Um, I don't know where you see it, but you'll have to take my word for it. Um, now, why don't we swap these things out, seeing as they're only 28% grown. That is quite a lot for Devil Strand. Swap those out for cotton. I didn't realize that arcane capacitors required cotton, to be honest with you. Now, we could also go as far to craft a load of mana weave, and then craft a bunch of mage clothes and mage armor out of mana weave. Because right now, everyone's wearing prison jumpsuits, which, of course, is great for work speed. Not particularly useful when we're up a massive, massive raid, as, as we've seen before. So, how are we doing with the barnacks as well? Um... Looking at advanced barnacles. comps. We've got a bunch of spare advanced barnacles. spines. We should really focus on upgrading everyone. You know, not, not just the weapons, but the weapons we want to give the best stuff to. Because there's a lot of artifacts that we've only seen very, very rarely. Like Krupp's armor. Uh, we, we can research how to do that, but it will take a very, very long time. And it's very, very expensive. Let's see what I can find here. Uh, I believe it's cybernetic organisms. Allows you to build super soldiers. That sounds incredible. That's exactly what we need if we're going to be fighting like three days worth of raids at a time. Especially because I think the raids as well draw from that. They're not like a set raid. So it won't just send in, you know, dudes with guns or whatever. I think it just draws from the pool like regular raids would. So we might be hit by Elder Things. We might be hit by uh, Zabrak. We might be hit by Twi'lek armies. We might be hit by the Empire. Who knows? This is going to be a mess either way. I don't think we're nearly even close to being ready for it yet. I get a lot more of those turrets as well. And some of these Rim Atomics big boy sort of... Uh, what, what, was that? what was that I wanted to get? These things. Some of these big boy guns as well, I think would help out a lot. The kill box is pretty good, but it could be better. You know, we, there's no reason we couldn't expand all of this down and just have a load of these guys. Now, I'd like to actually build up the wall a little bit too. Because how many times have we had it in a raid where people have just walked through, you know, a hole in the wall? So I'm kind of tempted to... Let me think about this. Uh, we could, to be honest, it's not too far to travel. If they come through here, come down here and travel down through there, we could just straight up get rid of this and build up this wall. So I'm just thinking we go something like that, huh? Because that would still slow them down a fair amount. We're building out of limestone too, so it's not as if it's like a, a particularly soft break. That way they're also, I don't believe they'll be inclined to mine through it. I think it will, the AI will see it as quick as just go around. And they always come through the top of this wall here, so I might also reinforce this one too. It's going to be kind of a pain in the ass to reinforce. We've got like half this building sticking out of it, but there we go. But I think, I think this is kind of necessary, the amount of times we've just had people walk through. Let's get Krupp to also go and pick up his goddamn lights every game, which apparently just lying around on the floor. I don't know if you noticed as well. So Krupp, we made a death knight. Now, I had to reload the save before this actually popped up. When we made him a death knight and had him relearn his warlock powers... It actually didn't give him back his warlock powers, so he only had he only had these ones to have access to these. But it still showed him up as having having this stuff. I just noticed it says might and magic as well. Um, so Krupp has seventy one points available. We do want to get everybody's ultimate ability too, which means we're gonna need even more bloody Devil Strand here. Um, why are we also not growing any stuff up here? Oh, I turned off allow sewing. Okay, let's let's put that one back on. Why did I turn that off? Was there a reason I did that? Was it like toxic fallout something ages ago? We just forgot to build it back up. That's okay. We'll re allow sewing on this then and just grow as much Devil Strand as possible. It's currently spring, so we should be able to get at least one good crop out of this. We've got a lot of people that have, you know, high growing stats and, and high growing priority, I should say. So really, we should see a decent amount of Devil Strand from this. And we'll try and get everyone their ultimate ability before the next big raid turns up. So now it's time for the Igor cloning program. Because unfortunately, there really is no way to bring back Igor besides cloning her entirely and, and putting a brain scan on the new one and, and making her the head of the cults instead. One thing I've done, which I didn't actually mention at the time, uh, I turned her into a lightning mage <laughs> with the with the reconditioning pod because I thought apparently that one's really really cool. It's just a, it's just a nice magic power to have. We haven't actually seen lightning mage. I've never once played a game of Rim of Magic with lightning mage enabled. Plus, we've already kind of got a priest. I know the idea was to make Igor a priest, but we really couldn't wait any longer because this is kind of getting a pain in the ass trying to get a priest. So. I'm thinking we'll make our head of our cults, because, you know, they worship the old gods, the, the deep one or whatever, Cthulhu bringer of storms or, or some shit. I'm sure I can think of some head cannon to justify why she'd be able to shoot out lightning bolts. So let's get Eagle recloned then, and then I guess we'll have to dispose of this corpse, because it is full of, like, Cthulhuid, um, Cthulhuid growths and whatnot. So we'll, we'll try and find a safe way to dispose of that. Let's get you uh, sequenced. We won't apply Eagle's own brain scan to her. We'll apply someone else's brain scan to Eagle's cloned brain so that she's got all the skills and abilities of someone else in the colony here. Um, Amanama Damba Pamba, if you could get on with this as soon as possible. Oh, Sidian's going to do it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I should probably turn you off of Surgeon, though, because obviously you're, you're less skilled than just about everyone else here. There we go. Okay, Eagle, Eagle through genome sequence template. Right, let's get that loaded in as soon as possible. So who is... Who's free? Eagle, can you do that? 
Eagle cannot do that. Oh, we actually need to start the growing process, don't we? So we've got Eagle through. Oh, we've got Eagle through. Oh, that's confusing. Okay, well, we must have a spare one kicking around somewhere. Um, we've got Crop. We've got Calico Ethereum. We've got Eagle through. Okay, so what's this one got? Uh, undead Psychopath. So that's one we need to get rid of because that is clearly Undead Psychopath. It's not, not any use at all. Let's get you to go and pick that one up. Hopefully that will remove it from the cloning list. Right, start growing. And we've got uh, Eagle Through. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Let's get everyone popping that. So, so we should have, I think, enough solution left behind. So I'm pretty sure I set just a bill to... Yeah, okay. So I've actually set it so that we always have this amount in storage just in case we need to do some emergency cloning. This is cool. I'm really excited to see what the Lightning Mage has got for us. Like I said, I've never seen that. It's one of the rare... Rim of Magic classes that I've actually never really experienced too much. So all we've got to do now, get a bunch of Devil Strand, which we've already started growing right now. Of course, when Jilt wakes up, he can come and uh, blitz that in no time at all. Feeding on Terran Evans. Is he glitched out again? He is glitched out again. Hooray! Uh, unless that is working. Uh, it is working this time. Okay, fine. I did notice yesterday it was still bugged out. He was trying to feed on crop, I think it was. And uh, he was not getting any V-save from that. So it's still not perfect. I have put this at the bottom of the load order because everyone said that would fix it. It didn't, but it does seem to be better. So I, I will give some props there to that one. It's, it's still, it still isn't perfect, like I said. There are still some other incapacitabilities. I don't know whether it's like... Um, does it count as damaging them? I mean, that would give some blood loss. So maybe against characters who can't be affected by that type of thing. I don't know. It doesn't matter too much anyway, because because clearly we're fine now. So we need 125 more protein mash, which I assume... Is anyone going to fill that up? Job, what are you doing these days? So in Devil Strand, yeah, to be honest, I'm kind of happy to let Job do that, because he's such a fast worker. He'll get all this stuff done as soon as possible. Let's just wake anybody else up. Bonnet, you can do it. Bonnet, Bonnet can't do it. He must be incapable. Unless someone else just beat him to it. Uh, someone else bringing that stuff down? There we go. Okay. Igor. Igor, of course. Very excited there to have a new body. Perfect. Igor Throog, welcome back. We have a ridiculous excess of power, and we're not really doing any big, big old projects now. Like, like we've we've limited the uh, the Bionics project quite heavily now to just sort of ears, eyes. That's still going to be very expensive, but I imagine we've got some steel line around, huh? Yeah, we really, really do. We've got plenty of components from probably the Mechanoid Raid, where we've just assembled everything and haven't really built anything else since. We've got 12 advanced components, too. I'm thinking we start building some more big old hydroponic base like this. So I'm actually going to put that last wall in because we're just going to blueprint the whole thing, obviously. Uh, how are you, how's the how's the Devil Strand farm going there, Job? I might set him to be top priority in sowing. Just because we've got many, many people capable of growing. A Job can do things very, very quickly because he's a vampire. Uh, so I might drop that down a level. And then we'll drop this one down. Plant cutting. Oh, plant cutting stay at the top. We'll drop that one down, that one down, that one down. So he'll do harvesting, growing. And then if you can't do that, obviously it'll restart. Butchering. The only reason I sent him to butcher was so that he could butcher the Migo because he's a psychopath, so he's not really bothered by that type of thing. I'm going to turn that off for the time being because we've got people who are much, much better at cooking. I'd rather Jolt do, the, you know, the longer, harder jobs because he can get this done so much more quickly. And the quicker we can get this done, the quicker they can start growing, huh? Good. Okay. Um. Let's get... What are you doing then? So more Devil Strand. Cool. Let's get anybody who is capable of even the slightest bit of constructing. Have we got anybody who's awake capable of doing that? No. Wait for them to wake up, then we'll blueprint this whole thing, and I guess we'll start building it at the top here. I think that just fits in quite nicely as well, mainly because it's, you know, right adjacent to the freezer there. It's going to save a lot of time hauling shit back and forth. Now, the question is, can we do the resurrect? Edward Collin, 52 out of 84. Unless we can build one of those arcane capacitors relatively soon, I guess, I guess not. We could, could we build one of those? Uh, dimensional pocket out of bone? We can. Oh, shit, we've got enough to actually build a dimensional pocket. Oh, awesome. Job. Okay, I am. I know I said I was going to let him do the Devil's Tram, but this is this is much more important. We can resurrect three of our dead colonists here. I don't know what that's supposed to be, but that's vile. Oh, there we go. Oh, God, that looks a bit... That's, that's a very, very, very species, 8472. Very cool. Right. So, fuel is set to the maximum. I assume we can limit the amount of mana we actually want to put in there. Right, let's get Bonnet, seeing as Bonnet's awake right now. Charging portal. He's actually already on it. There we go. And he's got plenty of mana left. Can we just get him to charge that forever? Can you just keep, keep charging? Uh, is it working? It is working. There we go. All right, and then we want to get Edward Collin to... Can I refuel... Wait, we need to put fuel in there? Oh, does it use fuel to sustain itself as well? I already have no clue. So the way we can top those up automatically is just by having your magic skill set to the top, which we already have, obviously, for, for everybody it's relevant for. So these guys should automatically run up to it and start topping up whenever they feel like it. So how does this one work, then? Does it just still give mana to draft upon? So if we get Edward Collin, who's currently undergoing reconditioning, just wait for, wait for that in a second... Hello, welcome back. Okay, right, so let's get you over to the portal then and see if we can't drain it of its mana very, very quickly. So Terran Evans also topping it up there, and that should... N no? How does this work? Um, I thought it would be the same thing. Let's take a look here. The Dimensional Pocket would discharge mana to any undrafted pawn if their mana is below 40% and any drafted mage lower than 80%. 
Right, okay, cool. Um, if they're above 90% of their maximum, fine. So why is that not topping him up? Because does he not fall into the fall into that category exactly? Uh, oh, there we go. There we go. Okay, it takes a very, very long time. So unlike the arcane capacitor that you'll see, you know, rapidly firing out a bunch of mana, this thing takes ages, but I guess that's because of its super high storage. Now the question is, is it 80 mana to resurrect, or oh, whatever we're down to now, 66.6, .6. oh, that's a bit cursed. Is it 66.6 .6 mana to per, per person, or is it just in... So I'm going to dig all of them up, just in case it does do, like, a group area. Do not touch these boys. They are they are super forbidden. Um, I think it is per person, isn't it? So who do we bring back first? I mean, it, it's got to be Donuts. It's got to be Donuts. All that time and effort we spent getting this guy. We can unforbid those, then. You guys can get back to the get back to the pod. It failed? No, it's doing something. Uh, <gasps> he's back. Donuts Banger. He returns to us. Transhumanist first strike. Oh, we can fix that. Don't worry, my friend. Holy shit, he's back. He's got Resurrection Weakness 3. Oh, man. How does that... How long does that last? Or is that permanent? I don't know. Because he's also got Resurrection Sickness. You would kind of imply that that would take not too long to uh, fix. Get him to the hospital. My God, we've actually done it. Donuts is back. Okay, let, let's get you over there. Like, sort of post... Where's, where are you taking him? What the fuck? No, don't put him in there. That's the emergency medical bay. Um, I'm going to untick that from medical then for the time being. Get him down to the good hospital. I wish they would always prioritize the best hospital unless someone else is already in the bed. No, they're not. I don't know why he's doing that then. Uh, Donuts, let's get you just quickly drafted, undrafted. Is he going to move that over to the good bed now? Nope, still not. Okay, thank you. Hilarious. Uh, so let's go draft, undraft, and then, excuse me, undraft, rescue. There we go. Okay, perfect. And he's actually taken them to the, the really good hospital as well. In fact, they might be, I guess they might be equally as good as one another. Because this one's also got the same sort of facilities there. Boom. Welcome back, Donut. So he's a transhumanist. Oh my god, he's lost his werewolf powers. Maybe, wait, why has he lost his werewolf powers, huh? Maybe I have to reload or something. Uh, hopefully he hasn't, because he was obviously a super high-level werewolf before he died, huh? Maybe that's just, maybe that's just the price we have to pay for resurrecting the guy. We could always turn him into a mage or something as well here. Man, I forgot how good Donuts was. I can't believe I'll let you die for this long, my man. Transhumanist. So, the issue is with werewolves is when they transform, obviously, that any bionics we give them that are going to disappear. I wonder if there are any that are safe. We might have to test this out. We might have to do some, some testing to see what body parts remain. Because when he transforms, he goes from having like human arms to werewolf arms. So those werewolf arms are just going to replace whatever his current human arm is. But the spine or something like that might carry over. You might not have werewolf spine. You might just have a generic spine. So you might be able to give him that advanced barnic spine and it will carry over to his werewolf form. Or it'll just be a horrible waste of, you know, barnics that are worth 10,000 silver apiece. But hey, we'll give that a go when we get there. Um, I'm going to finish Marshall book. Oh, right. We have actually never got around to finishing that either. So now we've got to wait a while for, obviously, Colin to uh, rebuild his mana storage. We've got to wait for the, the Bone China Dimensional Mana Storage to rebuild as well there. And then, eventually... Why, why, could, why are they not filling that up as soon as they can? Um, I have no idea, because everyone has a, a fair amount of mana, right? They've got to be above 80%. Oh, I guess I guess not then. Okay. Well, I guess over over time, then, it will just slowly fill up. Uh, crops, crops on it now. Cool. And then we'll draft them up when there's a decent amount in there, and then try and resurrect our other boys as well. That did, did just disappear again. I saw that. Don't lie to me. I, I saw that disappear. Um, Wait, what? Where did that mana go? Huh. Well, let's just keep a close eye on that, huh? So I'm going to give Donitz uh, just a Bionic Spine quickly, even if we lose it when he transforms into a werewolf. It's not it's not a big deal. I just feel like it's free. You know, it's, it's basically just free mood that we're not using on him, just keeping it like that. Not only is it getting rid of the debuff, but it's also going to give him a nice little bonus as well there. So we might as well focus on that. How's the Igor clone coming along? We've got another 21 days left on that one. Medical em emergency. Has life-threatening malnutrition. What? But you're undead. No, you're not undead. Because we got that away. So we've severed the connection of Igor to, uh, Igor to Bonnet, but I don't think Igor can eat food because Igor is a, a horrible zombie. Um, wait, what? Do we do we have to force feed Igor? Let's see what happens here. I, th I think we may have broken the game by obviously removing Undead for a... a, a but we, we've done this before, though. We did this with Krupp. Well, let's see what happens anyway. We, we might just have to genuinely keep Igor's corpse alive. Um, so let's get Amba Damba Damba. Cannot finish, cannot rest. Is, so, is someone going to give him a feeder now? If not, we'll just we'll just kill her. Like we'll just we'll just get we'll just get Bonnet to dismiss Undead, and then we'll rebuild Eagle with. Uh, or we'll bring Eagle back, obviously, when the other Eagle clone is done. You know what? Just get rid of her preemptively. This this. Oh, I thought you had life threatening malnutrition. It's gone from extreme to severe. This is bugged. This is this is bugged. Goodbye, goodbye, Eagle. Um, let's go ahead and dismiss Undead. 
Thank you for your... Okay, fine. Uh, excuse me, do you want to... Uh, it's betraying us. It's got its own sentience. Where has it gone? Hey, uh, squad up. Let's get rid of Igor. It's been, a, it's been a great character, but this is now the false Igor. New Igor is being rebuilt. Let's get rid of you. Dismiss undead. Goodbye. Nice knowing you. Um, oh, I thought normally that... You know what? Just eat Igor. Get rid of the corpse as well. Boom. Goodbye. She's now permanently incorporated into Bonnet. As her power has been transferred to Bonnet Bigley, uh, who just ate a Cthulhu beast. I feel like that bad things happen when you do that, right? Is there not a HP Lovecraft story where someone does actually eat a, an, an elder, an outer, outer thing, an elder thing? One of those horrible beasts? I have no idea. It doesn't matter too much, anyway. Okay, so now we've got to get a brain scan ready for Igor as well. We'll wait, obviously, until it's, it's right to the last minute. But looking at our skill sets here, we can either go for, again, Jilp, or we can go for an Amber Namba Damba brain scan. Um, either are fine. Either are fine. Depends on what we want Igor to do, I guess. Or maybe we should just go with shooting at this point, huh? Maybe we should go with Krupp. Oh, hang on. Who's got the best, who's got the best combat skills? Um, Jilp has shooting. Oh, also, as well... I forgot to mention this in the comment section of the last video, but I do already know that the mortars are... It turns out people lied to me. YouTube comment section telling me lies. Who'd have thought? It turns out the mortars apparently aren't affected by the shooting stat of the person using it. And that's still a bug that's not been fixed in the base game. So we can put absolutely anyone on it. Which is good, because our best shooter is Jilp. And obviously he can't stand... The, the mortars are unroofed, because they're fucking mortars. And during the daytime, obviously he'll melt. So that's, that's, a, a, that's a blessing as far as I'm concerned. We don't have to worry about that too much. I think this might be bugged because i just charged up to full with with bonnet and then it's now well, obviously not charged full but i gave him all of his mana into this thing and now it's immediately started to disperse it again like it's, it's just disappearing into the ether um we might as well drain what's left i might even get rid of it because it, it's just a waste of time otherwise if they're spending time to try and refill the damn thing and it's not actually doing anything for us then we might as well just we might as well just remove it huh um yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. I've I've absolutely no clue. But uh, we're up to 19 fuel now. Come on, please, please give him the 19 mana. Then we can actually resurrect Rednax again and get to work. There we go. Okay. I mean, it's still not very practical, is it? Because when people are walking past, it's just as they. I think what's going on is they're filling up with their mana, and then as they're leaving, it's filling up their mana as they're going away. So it it just doesn't seem very practical at all. Um, it's a shame you can only you can't just set it to just drafted pawns. That way, it the only way someone will oh you prick, you just put all the mana back in it. Um, where's he gone? When I say draft, you fucking stay drafted, you little god damn it. All right, bring him back. Um, there we go. Okay, so we're up to 82 again. I still don't know what whether it's any use. I still don't know if it's any use. We, we might just get rid of it. Hey, that's not a problem. Right. Okay. So who's next on our list? We've got um Rednax or Jeff. Jeff is our uh, head programmer. Also, Jeff is just very, very useful to have around. So I'm going to resurrect you first. Please don't touch Jeff's body. There we go. Are you... So these minions, <clears throat> these minions, when they start grabbing something, we can't stop them. Uh, we actually can't stop them short of shooting them dead. That's, <laughs> that's really annoying. That's, that's genuinely fucking really annoying. So let's go ahead and put down a spare hydroponics bay here, just because that way it's still deep in the mountain and we're not, we don't have to worry about, uh, cool, thank you for letting me know there's valuable all there. Can we fit another one, like, perfectly? Oh my god, we can fit another one almost perfectly right there as well. That's really useful. Um, I'm gonna put the door facing up, because then we could always put another couple, like, we could, we could genuinely put, like, four other damn things to take up slight, a slight bit of room in this kill box, which is otherwise completely pointless. So we could put one there, and then another one right there, and have four separate hydroponics bays. That's pretty massive. That's, uh, that would be pretty cool. We'll start with we'll start with one because uh, I think this is going to get a little over the top. I'll go ahead and forbid everything here or or not. We won't forbid it. <laughs> everything there at all. You suck. You suck. What's the point of the forbid tool if it doesn't forbid things? Well, there we go. We'll do that for the time being. Um, we can also get rid of that second door. Let them build all this up as soon as possible. What we should really do is get Jilp to work on that bone door, open it up, otherwise they'll, you know, obviously, obviously they can't work on it unless we, we will open that up as soon as possible, so that way many, many miners can flock to it and start working on it immediately. But what I should also do then is just designate the whole thing to be mined out as well on top of that. There we go. So that's that's what I was hoping for. As this person digs out blocks, someone else is going to come and dig the next block. Perfect. And I've set mining to be the top job for basically everyone, so this should take no time at all to get all this stuff dug out here. Ah, oh, why are you already building on areas we haven't finished? 
That's kind of annoying, but it's, it's alright. It doesn't matter too much. We might as well get it done as soon as possible, huh? So this one we could turn into Devil Strand, for example. We could build another one next door for, for I guess, heal root, something like that might be useful. Or we could just go with plenty of crops. How much food have we got left in storage? 34 days. Actually, we are, we are quite rapidly losing food then. We had 110 not so long ago, and then we, we very slowly started working through. So hydroponics now is probably the best time to do it before we, before we start getting into some, some real issues with this. This will be a good challenge for crop, I think. A massive sinkhole has opened up near your colony. A colossal be beast rise beneath, clawing at the minds of your colony with unseen fingers. Let's go and send... Oh, right next to some mortars as well, huh? Let's go and send crop over to here and just see if he can solo it. See if he's capable of doing that right now. I imagine it'll also help build up his, uh, his might a little bit. Now, he definitely, I think... Want to build up lifesteal more than anything else. He's already got a ridiculous amount of DPS. So let's go with deal stamina and generates hate proportional to damage dealt. Oh, that's cool. Um, melee attack steal life proportional to the damage dealt. That's going to be huge. I think I think this one, up upgrading just to every layer of this to start off with is, is going to be unbelievably powerful. Because he's already doing a ridiculous amount of melee attacks from the fact that he's got so much so many powers invested into his, uh, to his abilities. Um, speaking of which, should we start going dark side or light side? Um... I don't really know. We could we could up his force pool first, but he hasn't got any force powers, so I, I'd rather get something more practical, you know. Um, force drain. It doesn't really need any more life steal. Force choke is really really great for the stun, as we found out previously. So I'm gonna go for that one first. Look at this guy's abilities. We're getting out of hand here. We've got we've got three separate mods going on with this dude alone, which I think is quite cool. Right here we go. Okay. Um, it's just melee. There it is. Okay. No, oh, do not get do not get 200 damage. He's not gonna be able to touch him. He's not going to be able to touch him. If, if it's doing... Wait, does it do the... Does it heal the amount he hits? Melee attack steal. Uh, each skill increases the amount by 5%. Proportional. Well, what's the proportion? Because he seems... He's, he's been hit a couple of times here, and he's just instantly healing back up. This is insane. This is insane. A corrupt Vush, capable of single-handedly taking out these, uh, these, these elder entities. Wow. That's, that's absurd. That's absolutely absurd. Well done, Krupp. Uh, that was, I think that was a good trial. It wasn't really much of a test of his abilities, to be honest. That was just that was just pest control. Oh, no. Okay. Bear with. Uh, what have we got? That's not as much as I was expecting. Okay, we've got a, the Galactic Empire have dropped down. They've got a whole bunch of wizards. Now, the Galactic Empire, I can only assume the reason there's so few of them is because they have such powerful weapons and armor. you got to remember, these guys have... So, oh, this is a siege, by the way. I don't think I don't think I point that. I closed the message off without even thinking about it. We've got uh, to say there, enemy raid. Uh, it is definitely there. We go right, perfect. Let's do it. Let's see what they've got. Where are they? Where are they setting up base things? We might have to mortar them now that I know mortars work as well. We we should be good with that. Uh, right, so setting up over there. Now they're not going to be able to hit our base, so I'm not I'm not really concerned about that. Obviously, our steel hell is going to be able to take those guys out without them doing anything back. So we could just wait and starve them out. Uh is that a legit strategy? How many shells they got? They bought a lot with them, so we've been waiting quite a while. Um, or, alternatively, we try and mortar them, but to be honest, they can't do any damage. If that's all they've got, they can't do any damage. Why not? Let's, let's just send Jilt to go and let's, let's fire off a couple of, you know, warning shots. All right, here it goes. We're firing. Come on, Jilt. You've got to, you've got to do some damage with that. They've, they've Unfortunately, they were all bunched up here, and now they've all obviously spread out a little bit more. Right. Okay, he's, he's a shit shot anyway, so maybe it'll go. Oh, there it is. Incredible. For fuck's sake. Well, let's aim a little further back. Let's let's not be so um let's not be so ambitious with where we're aiming here. I was trying to kill many at once, but let's uh let's just go for somewhere like that. Come on. That'll do it. Holy shit, we actually killed one of them with the mortar already. And they can't do any damage back, because of course we've got our we've got our laser defense grid. Let's fire another one. Good shot. Oh my god, we took out the mortar. Um I guess we'll try and take out the other one too then. We'll just sort of aim around there, because that way we're at least gonna hit something. You think they'd be assaulting the colony by now? Given that two mortar shells have come in and we've destroyed one of their own mortars. Okay, now Jilt's going to have to disappear in a second. Let's, let's get one more shell off. Come on. Oh, come on, Jilt. And I assume our laser grid is working as intended? Well, we've definitely not been hit by anything, huh? We've definitely been hit by nothing here. Man, those lasers are super, super powerful. Given the amount of research we're putting, that's kind of to be expected, though, huh? Right, come on, Jilt. One more, one more shell. One more shell. Where did that one end up? Did he just completely miss again? Okay, let's get back indoors. Get back indoors, otherwise he's going to catch fire. Let's go let fire. Oh, they hit our farm. Well, that's a little annoying. Um, beating the fire. Okay, everyone's everyone's going to come and pounce on that. Well, we lost uh, a little tiny bit of Devil Strand there. That is uh, somewhat annoying, I will admit. Right, Job, go back indoors. No, no, no. You, you go back indoors. Otherwise, you're going to melt, my friend. Um, okay, fine. I suppose I never really considered them attacking this area. It is it is somewhat valuable, I guess. Let's get Crixus on a mortar. And let's get just anyone else who's around. City, and you'll, you'll do that as well. Because apparently these things, really, we can, just, we can just go mad and it doesn't really matter too much. All right. 
Let's see what we can do. Can we take out that other mortar? Because I think that might encourage them to actually come and attack us then. Not that I'm worried about this, right? You know what? What, what am I doing? What am I do Why am I bothering? Sending crop. Sending the, sending the lone warrior crop. He, the, the mortars can provide some crubber, but th this, is, this is just going to be a massacre. Go for it. Try and stop him. Try and stop him. Look at this. He's using his, he's using his magic powers there. And now he's been turned into a... How do you kill a god? You turn him into a fucking scorpion. God, shit. Okay, well, now we're going to have to go somewhere to go and rescue his corpse quickly so we can bring him back. God damn it. How are we looking with our resurrection? We've got 80. We can just bring him straight back. It's okay. All right, send out the send out the crop rescue squad. Shit. So the only real thing, then, that I guess could ever kill him are, are, are abilities like that. You know, maybe like a bard lullaby would be able to put him down as well. Oh, man. To be able to solo a group of mages is probably not on our... Probably, probably not something we can do in the future, then, huh? Um, we're still shelling them. Oh, God, please be careful not to shell Krupp's corpse. Please be careful not to shell Krupp's corpse. Okay, let's do it, then. Let's do it. Jop, Jop, you, you need to stay at home. Yeah, you need to, you need to, go, to go to bed. That's it. Beating the, beating the fire out. Oh, God, no. Ignore that. That's, that's not relevant. Clear home area. None of this is home area. Get out of here. Right, Jop, go, go to bed, because it's daytime and you're going to die. There we go. Okay, so how's, how's Rescue Squad Krupp going along? Um... Okay, probably being there is a bad idea. Let's uh, stand around here and let's shoot them as they come around the corner. Let's set up like a like a grid like that. Who's this? Krupp Gen 2. I will save you. I'll save you, me. Melee attack. Get in there. Let's give Krupp Gen 2 a test because this is the Weapon X project. Let's see how good he really truly is. Uh, seems to be okay. I mean, obviously sending him out here solo is probably a, a, death, a death wish. But I just want to see how good he is. See if he is actually capable of doing some damage here. We give him a lightsaber. He's got force powers. We give him a lightsaber. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Um, what does this do? Okay, what about what about Tiger Strike? What about Dragon Strike? Let's do, let's do a Dragon Strike on, on this fella here. Right, up, oh, he's down. Well, that was good. Weapon X project going perfectly then. We lost our two most powerful boys. Luckily, we've got the whole squad here to come and back them up in no time. Thank you. Kidnap who they can and leave. Who are they kidnapping? Oh, they're taking Generation 2 Krupp, are they? Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. Yeah, good luck with that one. Kill them all. Good work. Okay. Uh, one of you rescue, rescue Krupp. And then where is our, where's our Edward Colin? There we are. Right, you get down here and resurrect the other guy quickly before, this, before, he, uh, before he gets a bit rotten. Resurrection. Bring him to life. Return to us, mighty Krupp, who fell in battle before his time. Amen. Hallelujah. There he is. Okay, fine. Uh, how's, he, how's he doing? Is he surviving? Hate resurrection sickness. Well, I mean, he's a Sith Lord. Yeah, apparently the way the resurrection works is it's not really risky unless they've been dead for quite some time or they're missing like a bunch of parts or something like that. So for the time being, he seems to be, we, we seem to be absolutely good with that. I'm going to turn those off. We'll, we'll turn off it. I, I saw a comment saying you should turn off the auto abilities on everyone. Oh, well, apparently we fucking can't now, huh? There we go. Right. Um, I do agree. I do think it'd be, it'd be good for saving up a bunch of mana, but I think the only people that's really relevant for are, are people like Obi-Wan. Um, just to stop him resurrecting, having these turned off will just allow him to obviously build up a little bit of that. Rescue him. Someone come grab his lightsaber. You, you can grab his light. You, uh, excuse me. Come grab all this lightsaber. Oh, the minion's on it. Okay, everyone else. Uh, I guess just, uh, I guess just, just chill. What a, what a failure. What a failure of the, of the Weapon X project there. We need to find a way to repel enchanters and polymorphs and, and all sorts of things like that. So having test out a lot of the abilities we have access to and testing out some of our troops, I think we're a long way from being ready for that final raid, huh? Today's been a very good episode for really making sure that the, the, the combat ability is going to work as intended. It's been a really good sort of litmus test of whether or not we're going to survive that. The answer is no. The answer is no, we're not. I think maybe actually getting Krupp Gen 2, you know, I was thinking of giving him the cyber arms or whatever. Why don't we just give him a lightsaber instead, or is he specifically intended for unarmed? Maybe it would have been better just not having that spear whatsoever, huh? Um... I, th I thought maybe he was just a melee character, but you know what? It actually might just be better not giving him any goddamn weapon at all in hindsight. Uh, does, it, does it give him, like, a bonus to an arm damage? It doesn't. It just gives him melee hit chance, so I guess it wouldn't make any... Unless he's got, like, a passability. Anyway, I'll read up on the, the best sort of monk build, whether or not it is advised to, to not give him a weapon or something like that. How's Krupp doing? Is he, he will survive. He will live another day. I mean, he wouldn't because he actually absolutely died. Oh, he looks, looks like he lost some skills, though. My... No, no, I don't think he has. I think we're fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, great minion is sprung a trap and take you, useless kid. I think we'll leave that there. I need to. I think we need to, to actually come up with a decent game plan for next time and, and sort of come up with how we're going to maximize these these troops that we've got because they're really not instilling me with too much confidence. If that's 
a minor Imperial raid that Krupp couldn't... I mean, granted, they had, like, the ultimate counter to him, which was turn him into something else. That's fair. That's, that's pretty discounted. But there's nothing to say that when we get one of those big old raids, that they're not going to have a bunch of enchanters too capable of doing that. So we need to find a way to counter, you know, backup plans, contingency plans, or even find a way to just straight up shot that down so that we can't be polymorph whatsoever. I don't know if there's, like, a like a shield ability or something along those lines, but I will, uh, I'll do some research, see what I can dig up. In the meantime, thank you all for watching. Let's give a shout out to the insane top tier level patrons who made this series possible and make YouTube possible still in 2019, because without these guys... We'd all be poor and hungry. I mean, we're still poor and hungry, but we'd all be very poor and very, like we'd, we'd have to go and find a real big boy job, is what I'm saying. Big thank you to Alpha Scuff, for Sunakura to Atmos, this average game of 419, Bacon Kitten, Sedini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffernutter, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Kaden Carter, Michael Muller, Mr. Smug, Muskratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Scott, Skaz, Shayok Sinclair, Sir Thor the Swedes, Stannis the Manus, the Forsaken One, Seabag Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Candle, and Vacuous Backers. Thank you for your support at the insane tier levels on patreon thank you for making this all possible and a big shout out of course has to go to asro adam person akari andrew wilson attila board doom ben trope esmus max better valerian chris david van diepen don don't call two and seven easier to pronounce name exploding knees fraser brennan gabriel faulkner gabriel van Ders, gaz genji zirka gray haji demar hancock icy the great irish isaac israel jacob wolf jay lara james barnes jason jose yuan de Vries, john holiday jordan campbell joseph beer justin plot justin walters lemon start the smee llewellyn thomas luke wallace matthew monty nathaniel lundberg nick noah gallimore pants hammer panther pearl Peyton Denisar, Russian Olgar, Billionaire, Pey The Bloody Knight, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach Pillar, and Zico 2. Let's, let's build a proper decent weapon X now, huh? Uh, not, not for this messing around. Let's go for something that's got some real, real teeth to it.